I got into street art in 2007 due to a life and death near experience. It had to be rushed to the Bellevue Hospital, and on the way to Bellevue Hospital, I discovered a piece of street art by an artist, Tristan Eaton. Even as in the hospital, as I was getting prepped for surgery, I had my husband like looking up, like, you know, who's that guy and what was this about? And from then on, we we started diving into this whole world of street art and muralism and learning about artists and techniques. When I paint, it's definitely a rush. It's probably one of the, the best drugs you can do, whether the painting's coming out good or bad, you know, just put my headphones in and just rock out to some tunes and, you know, make a mess. I'm Ray the Drift Rosa, born and raised in New Yorker. I'm also the co-founder of the Lisa Project NYC. My wish was granted in 1999. Growing up with HIV was very difficult. My parents were carriers of it and I was born with that. Both were uh, drug users. Um, and that's how they contracted it themselves and, uh, you know, passed it along to me. I remember having my mom, she had overdosed and we were at Lincoln Hospital emergency room and I sat in that waiting room for hours. And next thing I know, there was a social worker coming out and I ended up in foster care at the age of five. Things seemed a bit strange. I was the only kid ever in the house uh, that was like eating off of like plastic plates and plastic sippy cups and all that stuff, you know. As a kid, you know, I'd, I knew it was weird, but I kind of, you know, you know, let it go, let it be. So that was a bit rough, but it was like no idea uh, what was going on until I was about age 10. And we went to a hospital visit and they like, hey, you finally gotta explain to him what's going on with his body. And I kind of just, you know, after finding out what I had and, you know, all the, you know, things you get to learn about this, you know, the disease, uh, kind of put myself in my own bubble. I decided not to do much. I became like a huge introvert. And at that time, I was attending a Jacoby Medical Hospital. I had a great doctor and he made sure I was healthy, you know, in good spirits. Um, and he also noticed a lot that I was very much depressed most of the time. He has suggested a Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, he thought it would be something to cheer me up. And at the time, uh, the popular wish was Disney World. And we went, we went on this trip, and what was extraordinary about it for me was when we went there, it was like being able to see all this creativity, this color, people, you know, living life happy. And that's not what I was having, but in that moment, it made me realize that there's more to life than just what I was experiencing. And it was up for me to, you know, decide how I wanted my life to be. So I met my adopted father a year after my Make-A-Wish wish was granted. And I would always feel kind of regretful when he would help me. I was always a kid that liked to make it on my own and get my own things. When he would help me with items, my question was always, you know, I gotta pay you back, you know, what's the cost of this? You know, how much do I owe you? And he's like, no, Ray. He's like, I'm not asking you to pay me back, but I would love for you to do is to pay it forward. You know, always pay it forward. You never know who's the next one who could be using help. And to this day, that's what I kind of live by, you know, you pay, I, like to, I love to pay it forward. So what's going on now, the last, within the last year or so, I, you know, I had Make-A-Wish on the brain and I decided to reach out and they didn't know, I wasn't aware of this alumni program that they had going on and I wanted to give back and they responded. And I'm here, I'm painting a mural for their lovely conference room just to, to bring some color into the space for them. It's something to look at to like brighten up their day after a long day of calls and making wishes happen, just come in here and, you know, I'm hoping they smile. This mural is a way for me to pay it forward to make a wish. I want to celebrate what they've given me and you know, I really hope that when they come in here and see this mural that they really know how much they impacted my life. For this collaboration with Make a Wish, there will be more murals. This won't be the only one. Uh, for the next uh, round of murals, we're actually going to be taking it to the streets. You know, so we're going to be doing some community-based murals. I think this project is going to help make a wish in a big way, letting people know that besides them being here, that they care, that they're willing to be involved, and they want to be a part of the communities of the kids that they're granting these wishes for. They want more than just to grant the wish. For when we bring these artists in for this project, you know, what I'm going to explain to them is first what make a wish means to me, and what make a wish means to the kids that they get to work with, and the impact that they create, and just ask them to, you know, within their pieces, to show that. Make-A-Wish means so much to me. You know, it gave me a light when I needed one. 
people. That's my that's my mission with that. Just to, you know, always pay it forward. You never know who's the next one who could be using help. Because I've had a you know a decent life, and I would love for others to experience you know the color I see in this world.